So one of the uh, data sets that I thought was most encouraging at ASCA was the immunotherapeutic data in small cell, relapsed small Absolutely. cell, where there's a huge abyss of uh, options there. You know, there's really not a lot of great options for those patients. Uh, you know, Roy, what, what were your thoughts about that? Yeah, there were, there were two papers, both in the oral session. One was with pembrolizumab, which is the uh, PD-1 antibody. The approach taken there was to try to search for pd one positive patients uh, the search was a tough one. I, I believe they, they screened over 140 patients. Most were left behind, as right, they said, yeah. Uh, to, to find a, a small group, uh, maybe 20 patients. Right. Uh, but of those 20, the response rate was, was reasonably good. It was in the 20% or more, more range. So, so clearly, uh, there, there is activity there. Um, uh, whether or not one can screen for pd one I can tell you from our own work at Yale, uh, trying to do PD-L1 staining on small cells very tough because of the, the, limited, the, biopsies the, the limited biopsies and the artifact you get yeah. from some of the frozen sections. But, 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 uh, but, but I, I think that it, it certainly is something to think about. Equally impressive was the data with uh, nivolumab or nivolumab plus ipilimumab. Yeah. And in that trial, you know, not only were there uh, good response rates, but for the combination, I believe uh, in the updated data at ASCA, the response rate was as high as about 35, 37 yeah. percent. And uh, what I was most impressed were, uh, by were the spider plots, which actually looked at the responses in the platinum refractory patients. Those patients, you know, we all know, nothing works. And uh, they were pretty steep down. There, there was clear activity. Now, there was more toxicity. Um, you know, of course, the grade three, four range was in the 40 percent or higher range, maybe even a little bit higher. Um, and you, you do sort of unmask some of the paraneoplastic issues. There was some limbic encephalitis, if I recall. But I think there's great potential there. And I'm, I, I know that there are some trials ongoing now or about to start looking at these drugs in small cell. And I think that's great because that's clearly an area where there hasn't been anything new in, in quite some time right. with many failed trials. So I, there's clearly activity there. And it, it goes with what you were saying, Nair. Everyone... Uh, with small cell smokes. I don't think I've yeah. ever seen anyone with small cell who didn't smoke. And, and there's plenty of mutations there. Yeah, so it's, I mean, the, the, you know, there's a reason why um, the, the small cell trials occurred so many years after the non-small cell. And the reason was that everyone did pd one testing on small cell tumors, and they were mostly negative. And they thought, you know, they're all negative. What's, you know, what are we going to do point? this for? Yeah. And I and and I and but yet they're they're all highly mutated, so it didn't make any sense. Um, and so you know the Pembro trial, for example, I mean the PDL1 positivity rate was half of that of non-small cell lung cancer. So there's clearly some other immunosuppression that's going on in small cell, which is completely different than non-small cell. So it's fascinating. Both lung cancer, both highly mutated tumors, but they're more immunosuppressed for some reason. And maybe that you know maybe that's why they have more autoimmune. Or, you know. Um, so I think you probably do need to uh, drive immune activation harder w in small cell than you do in non-small cell, which is why the combination worked so much better. So I, I, I'm not. I think that uh, I think that it, it shows that that uh, that all these tumors are not the same, and you need to think about them a little differently. Yeah, but I mean, at least it was some degree of enthusiasm, and 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 to have oh, these avail yeah, to have these enthusiasm. Yeah, tremendous enthusiasm. In fact. I'm getting uh, requests to use it when we don't have a protocol. Right. I mean, there are people coming, and you know, I think you know, you know, if you have nothing else to offer, certainly topotecan. You know, yeah. when someone is platinum refractory, you know, we yeah. are, we, we need new agents. Yeah. I, I think one of the phenomenon of having all of these different companies developing drugs at the same time means that there's a rich variety of trials scattering out across oncology, and that's right. been very fun, right? right. I, I I think one of the weird trials is the the Pacific. Uh, uh, Dervalumab after chemo radiation stage, stage three, like three, just a, yeah. you know, kind of kind of a random, but I think a neat idea. Right. Uh, and the idea that, that everyone's trying to find a niche to develop a drug for those various. That's a nice trial. And, and there I was, like that trial. There was very curable early. disease. Well, and there are curable disease, but there was a bit of a hint from the Stimuvax trials uh, with that that in patients post concurrent mm -hmm. chemo rads that there might be something there with an immune pr approach, if you will. So just trying to figure um, out who's going to go to thymoma first. Yeah. Then we'll really be making headway. Yeah. You can have that at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we.